Recently, I reconnected with a fighter kiting friend of mine who is even more passionate about fighter kiting than I am. And he goes by the name from all of his kiting friends as Fighter Dave. Dave. Fighter Dave is the most enthusiastic, most passionate fighter kiting fan I've ever met. In addition, he's an extremely skilled kite flyer, wins many, many competitions, enters a lot of competitions, and he's an incredible kite designer and kite maker as well. So he knows what he's doing. He's been doing it for over 25 years, like me. <laughs> this is a kite that he told me about in one of the conversations we recently had. And he calls it Wannabe. And it is a kite he has designed and has used in many, many competitions with great success. So I asked him if he would share the plan with me, and sure enough, he did. He's a very generous guy. And I also asked him if I wanted to, could I make a video of this and share it with the YouTube channel people? And he said, sure, sure. So here we are. This is Dave Young uh, from Oklahoma, Fighter Dave. This is his kite. And it's a beauty. I've flown it in two different wind conditions. One was from zero to about three miles an hour. Very, very light wind. And this particular kite right here that I made flew incredibly well. Absolutely unbelievable, in fact. So in light wind, this baby is a beauty. Today, the wind picked up a little, it was about seven or eight, and again, it flew beautifully. So I think this is a particularly great kite for someone who's either just getting started in fighter kite making and flying, or is on their path to getting better and better at it or an experienced flyer. All three groups can benefit from this kite. They'll each benefit a little differently, but they each will benefit by making and flying this beautiful kite. I have made a template from the uh, design, the pattern that uh, David given me. And the thing that I really noticed when I made the kite and when I made the pattern was its simplicity. And that is one of the big benefits to someone that's relatively new to kite making. Uh, making it simple is a really, really good idea. Especially when the simplicity does not interfere or reduce the uh, flight characteristics, the flight performance of the kite. And this is a good case. Now this kite is what I would call, relatively speaking, a wide aspect ratio kite. It has a much longer wingtip to wingtip dimension than its length. Now almost all fighter kiters have a little bit more width than length, but this one is a little bit more than average. That might be why it's so good. So I'm going to go through these dimensions with you so you have all the info you need to make the kite yourself and to make it right away. The bow length is 24 and a half inches. Now I used in my kite a 1.5 millimeter carbon fiber rod for the bow. So the bow, 24 and a half inches, which is what this is, fits right here, wingtip to wingtip, and the bow crosses the spine right here at this mark. 
this mark where it crosses is two and five eighths inches from the nose. And you'll notice that the bow meets these points here as it's bent when it's attached to uh, the wingtips, which is the way it's supposed to be. Now, in other videos, I've mentioned that having exact measurements of a kite is not as critical as having the exact dimensions on each side of the kite be the same. So if you, this is, for example, this is the wingtip line, 22 inches from here, one wingtip to the other, 22 inches. And you measure down from the nose, seven and a half inches, and then you draw this line perpendicular to the spine, 22, and two, 22 inches long. 11 inches on each side of the spine. Now, the spine is 17 and 5 eighths inches from nose to tail. But if you make this and you get this 22 inches, maybe it's not quite 22 inches or maybe it's a little more than 22 inches, it may not be exact, but as long as it's exact from the spine to the right wing tip and the spine to the left wing tip, that's what's important. And if you do make the kite and its dimension from wing tip to wing tip is slightly different, or if the piece of carbon fiber, if you're using carbon fiber, if the piece you're using bends a little differently, you don't have to make it exactly 24 and a half inches long. Make it so it fits correctly into the kite. That's way more important than the exact precise length. The uh, trailing edge is 14 and 3 quarters inches from the tail to the wingtip, where the wingtip line meets the trailing edge. This distance from here to here is seven and a half inches. No, excuse me, it is not. It is seven and a quarter inches right here. The battens, I use battens on my kite different than what he recommends. I don't know which is best. I'm just used to doing it this way at this time. I used to do it the way Dave does now. Dave puts battens here on the trailing edge, aimed at this point, from the trailing edge up to the point where the bow crosses the spine. And you can put two or three or four, or none, if you want, a battens on the kite. I use mine parallel, I use four, seem to work pretty well, but this is a kite Dave sent me, made from this pattern, and it's made of tissue paper and bamboo. He's a wonderful bamboo worker, and he even grew his own bamboo, so there you go. But he used no battens on this kite. And this kite flies really nice. So it kind of all depends on your own preference, either in the looks, the feel, whatever aspect you're focusing on. The bridle is a three-point bridle. I used uh, one and a half inches from the center of the spine to each side. On and measured it and tied my bridle to the bow right here. And then I measured six inches up from here and tied it there. And then I put on a toe, toe connector or toe point that slides, it's a lark's head knot, slides up and down. 
And one of the things I notice when I fly this kite, if I move this toe point down, so that's a little bit lower than normal, uh, maybe an eighth to a quarter inch lower than normal, this kite, when you want it to stop in midair, it'll do it. And it also allows for very precise control of the spin of the kite. Uh, there are a lot of very nice aspects you'll enjoy flying this just as I did. I hope you decide to make one or more. And if you make one, please let me know how you like the way the kite flies. And if you do have any issues that come up in the process, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to help if I can.